Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talk Tuesday. Growing up on the Tuesday. Dang, it's been a minute since we've done a Talk Tuesday. So this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving in America. Now, Thanksgiving is a holiday to be thankful, clearly, to eat and spend time with family and friends, and it's a good old time. But what is the point of it, and how did it all get started? Most of us have heard the story of how Thanksgiving began, the way that it's told in schools, but turns out, just like most things you learn in school about history is really fucking off. And since Thanksgiving is right around the corner, I thought I would ruin this holiday for you and your family and then you can pass it on to them and make them sad too. Because even though it's not as cute and happy as the version we're told in school, it is very important to know what really happened. So here is the version according to the school. According to the story, the first Thanksgiving was in 1621. There obviously aren't records of everything, but here we go. So we were basically told that that the pilgrims show up in Massachusetts from England. They had previously kidnapped some Native Americans and were shipping them back overseas to England to live the rest of their lives as slaves, which the textbooks normally casually leave this part out. But once the English returned to Massachusetts, they met a man named Squanto, which you probably have heard about in the story. Squanto was part of the Patuxet tribe, which is part of the Wampanoag nation. And apparently he was one of the people that was on the boat, was gonna be a slave, but somehow escaped and came back. Now, according to the story, Story, we hear that Squanto was extremely nice to the Native Americans. He taught them how to fish. He taught them how to grow crops, how to survive. A treaty was created between the Native Americans and the pilgrims, and this treaty made sure they were all mutually protected and sharing the land. So apparently one night, the pilgrims finished dinner early, and they went to go shoot off some guns. And when they were out shooting their guns, Massasoit, who was the leader of the Wampanoag tribe, heard the sound of the gunshots and came to them. So once him and his homies got there, the pilgrims basically invited them to join in and have a big old feast. The feast lasted a few days and they spent their time eating and playing and sharing and just being so thankful for one another. And they decided to make this a yearly holiday called Thanksgiving to celebrate the loving relationship between the pilgrims and the Native Americans. Sounds like bullshit, huh? Because it is. So here is the truth about what happened. All right, so back in 1608, there was a group of people that were called religious separatists. And these were basically people in England who wanted to break free from the Church of England and be able to practice whatever religion they wanted to. And these people would eventually become what we call pilgrims. So basically in 1608, they said, fuck you to England and peaced out and went over to Holland. And they hoped that Holland would be a lot more free, that they could practice whatever religion they wanted to. But it turned out that Holland was a bit too progressive for them. So basically, England wasn't liberal enough for them, and Holland was too liberal, so they decided to find somewhere else to go. So then in 1620, the Separatists decided to hop on a boat, which is called the Mayflower, and they took the boat from Holland to the New World, aka America. Now, it's important to understand that this was not the first group of people that came and colonized America. That happened before this. There were already British settlers there, and in 1607, they established a colony in Virginia. So the pilgrims hop on the Mayflower, and make their way to America. Now this is not no fucking carnival cruise. The boat pretty much sucked. It was dirty and smelly and not very comfortable. And they were on this thing for two months. And unfortunately, because you know, GPS it wasn't a thing back then, they went just a little bit off the route. Their plan was to land at the Hudson River and they ended up at Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So hey, give or take a couple miles, right? And after a month of them being in Cape Cod, they actually hopped on a little boat and went over to Plymouth. Now the really shitty thing about this was their timing. They didn't have as much of an idea of like what the weather would be like over here and they left Holland in September. So it took them two months, September, October, November, not a great time to be in New England. You know, it's pretty fucking cold in November. And you know, now they're into December and they're just now showing up at Plymouth. So it's snowy, it's freezing cold. They don't have, they're not very well prepared. So they're kind of fucked. Many of the pilgrims ended up getting sick and dying before spring even came to where they could actually plant food and try to establish themselves. And in addition, they brought disease over and it spread throughout the tribe and killed many of the Native Americans. They were reduced from 8,000 to 1500 because of the diseases. Now this is just a tiny amount of people that suffered um, at the hands of the settlers over hundreds of years um, that were you know, the original owners of this land. Like in 
insane numbers. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people were straight up murdered. Like it's insane. Or they were forced to be slaves. Some of them sex slaves probably started the whole sex trafficking we still deal with today. And they were put back on boats to England. So we screwed them so bad. But in March of 1621, it was finally beginning to become spring. Sorry for the shadow, you guys. I didn't realize that it was gonna get dark so fast. Jeez, it's that time of year, I guess. And in the spring, an Abenaki native introduced the pilgrims to Massasoit. And then Massasoit introduced the pilgrims to Squanto. Now, just like in the first story, Squanto did come and ask them if they needed help. He basically said, you know, you guys look like you're really fucking struggling here. You have no idea what you're doing. You just showed up here in winter and you're dying at crazy amounts. Let me help you. Let me teach you how to, you know, plant things. Let me teach you how to fish. Like the Native American were such good people that even though their people were dying from disease and stuff because of the pilgrims, they were still kind enough to them to help, want to help them and share the land that they had originally owned. Owned. Now he also established a treaty between the Wampanoag and the Pilgrims, similar to the first story. And after the Pilgrims acquired some skills and figured out how to grow their own food, they decided to throw a big party to celebrate the fact that they made it through the awful winter and have started to be able to provide for themselves. Now we aren't sure of the exact date of their celebration, but we know it was kind of around fall this time of year. The Pilgrims were like ready to turn down, ready to have this big feast. They invited Squanto, they invited Massasoit, and he shows up with like 90 of his homies and they're all about to feast. It's about to go down. Their feast was lit, honestly. And this wasn't just, you know, sit down for dinner for a little while. This was like three fucking days of celebration. Like they went hard. They were celebrating basically being alive. Like <laughs> the fact that they actually had kind of settled down and the friendship that they had made with the Native Americans. So when the schools say that the pilgrims and the Native Americans feasted together and celebrated after they taught them how to survive on the land, that part is false that's actually true but they always cut the story off there and there's a lot more to this story as time went on and more and more people came from England to America the area started becoming more populated with pilgrims eventually there were so many pilgrims coming over that they started to harm the Native Americans and demanding what was theirs on the land so basically the more and more people heard what was going on at the new land how cool it was over here and that they had it all set up they started coming over and they didn't understand what the original pilgrims knew about the Native Americans and like, you know, they weren't peaceful with them. They came in guns blazing, wanted to separate everyone, wanted to divide up things. Angry people were coming in fighting. And as the Native Americans were kind of becoming outnumbered by so many pilgrims, they started to slowly take them out. Now, one of the biggest attacks that is known to have happened was the green corn ceremony attack. Basically what happened is one of the native tribes named the Pocotes were celebrating their annual green corn ceremony. And a green corn ceremony is an annual celebration that it usually lasts for about four days and is practiced by various Native American tribes and they did not agree to the original treaty that Squanto negotiated between them and because of this and the fact they believe they had right to their land the pilgrims decided to murder as many of them as possible in the early hours of the morning after the natives had their green corn celebration English soldiers just showed up and surrounded all of the village while they were sleeping they then ordered them to come outside, and if they refused to come outside, they would just set their shelter on fire and they were burned alive inside of them. The ones that did come outside were either shot or beaten to death with a club. William Bradford, who was the former governor of Plymouth, described the massacre as, those that escaped the fire were slain with the sword, some hewed to pieces. It was a fearful sight to see them thus frying in the fire. Horrible was the stink and scent thereof, but the victory seemed like a sweet sacrifice. What the fuck? So after this, a new celebration was formed to celebrate the victory and slaying of all of those Native Americans, and it was called Thanksgiving. In 1937, they had their first official All Pilgrims Thanksgiving, which means there were only white pilgrims and no other Native Americans allowed. Notice how the textbooks and Google all say that the first Thanksgiving was on 1621. Interesting how they picked a date in history where things actually were good, but just a, a couple years after that, this huge massacre would take place. And it continued. The pilgrims continued going to different tribes and attacking
attacking them, selling children as young as 14 off into the sex slavery and just murdering anyone else. They would literally fill boats with like 500 people at a time and ship them back to England. There were even bounties paid for Indian scalps. So they were hoping that it would encourage more people to get involved in slaying them. One time they had a really successful day of murdering people and they decided to celebrate by playing with soccer balls during this big celebration and the soccer balls were made out of the Indian scalps. Fucking bizarre. And despite the treaty that was made, most of the chiefs were beheaded and the chief of the Wampanoag tribe was specifically beheaded and stuck on a stick for 24 years on display for everyone to see. And so these celebrations and massacres have continued for many years to come. And George Washington became the first president in 1789, and he decided that there should only be one day set aside every year to celebrate all of these successful massacres. When he created the Thanksgiving Proclamation, the Native Americans aren't even mentioned in it one time, even though they were basically the reason that the pilgrims were able to establish themselves, AKA, we may not be here today without them. Later on, when Abe Lincoln became president, during the mid 1800s during the Civil War, he declared Thanksgiving should be a national holiday on the last Thursday of November, but he thought it should be a day that was all about family and being thankful, and it would bring the country together and help with the Civil War. Thanksgiving was first celebrated as a national holiday on November 26th of 1863. And then in 1939, President Franklin D. Roosevelt decided that he was going to move the holiday up a week so that people could start their Christmas shopping a whole week earlier. And the reason he did that was to basically boost the economy during the Great Depression. It added more time for people to shop for Christmas. And then in 1941, FDR signed a bill saying that Thanksgiving was to be officially on the fourth Thursday of November, not the last, even though it always ends up being on the last anyway. To this day, hundreds of Native Americans gather together at Coles Hill in Plymouth, Massachusetts. And for them, it's actually referred to as a day of mourning. National Day of Mourning is on Thanksgiving and it is used as a time to remember what happened happened to the Native Americans of this land. Obviously this is a terribly sad story, but I feel like it's so important that we know the truth. And I plan to tell my kids the truth, not what I was told, because for a long time I just thought it was like a big old party, like everyone was fine. But knowing the truth about what happened truly makes you think of the meaning of Thanksgiving and what you should be thinking about on that day. So if you are inspired by this story, this Thanksgiving I challenge you to donate to the Native Americans. You can donate to the Native American Rights Fund. That is linked below, or there's also a donation link to the Native American Heritage Association, which is a charitable nonprofit organization that is dedicated to helping Native American families in need living on reservations in South Dakota and Wyoming specifically. Now, I don't mean to ruin your Thanksgiving. Please go enjoy yourself, be with your family. Don't worry about shopping and deals and stuff. That always bums me out every year. Focus on your family and be grateful for what you have, not just for you know the things you have in your life and the people that you have in your life, but this land that you live on that, you know, we basically took from someone else. The Native Americans sacrificed a lot um, unwillingly so that we could live on this land. I know this was like a really upsetting video and I never know how to end these. Same thing when I did like the video on Columbus. It's just like such a horrible story that there's no like way to end it positively. But I do want to say that I'm very thankful for you guys and I'm so glad that you enjoy my content. I'm so thankful to have just hit a million subscribers. It's incredible. And lastly, I just want to remind you that you can donate to the Native Americans, help them out specifically. There's a link below. Also, I'm going to link donation links for the fires going on in California because they need help more than ever. And this is the time of year to give. So thank you for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more videos like breaking down the truth about history. Hit me with a thumbs up if you want to see that and I will definitely do it. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. Please share this story with someone who needs to know the truth about it because the truth will set us free.